One of my loyal Patreon supporters asked me how to create gaps between car parts, such as the ones that you can see right here, while also keeping your topology perfect. So I'm going to give you an explanation which is going to be really easy to understand, even if you're a beginner. If you want to see more tutorials about car modeling, product visualization, and topology in Blender, then subscribe to the channel and let me know what you want me to talk about in the next video below. And if you're really serious about getting good at modeling in Blender, then check out my Blender ebook because I put everything that I know about Blender modeling and texturing in there. So that's gonna take you to a whole nother level. But let's not waste any more time with an intro, let's talk about the topic. Right here I duplicated the body of this car so I can show you a very simple example of how to create these gaps between panels on cars. We're going to start with something very easy just so I show you how this works and then you can apply this to any other surface that you're working on it's going to be basically the same shit that I'm about to show you right now let's say that we want to create a cut or a gap right here between this light at the back and the hole for this wheel right here and we want that to look pretty much exactly like this gap right here so we're going to go to edit mode and right now we're using a subdivision surface modifier but we can disable that or we can keep it enabled it doesn't really make any difference the model just looks a little bit different when we observe it but the modeling is still exactly the same as long as we don't apply this subdivision surface modifier. If we apply this, we get a whole lot more geometry and it's a little bit more complicated to work with this type of geometry. So we're going to keep this simple and low poly and here's how you can make that gap. Ideally, you want to use the geometry which you already have on your car and you don't want to have to create new geometry. Now, of course, that's easier said than done and you're probably going to have to create some new geometry. But at the very least, try to use as much existing geometry as possible before you start making new cuts. And I'm going to show you how to do that and also how to make new cuts so don't worry in this case we have an edge loop right here which we're going to use for this gap because this is exactly in the position where i want to have the gap but if you don't have something like this for example maybe you have some geometry nearby and not exactly on the line where you want to have the gap you can just take the nearby geometry and move it into place and try to align it with the position where you want to have the gap and you can do that very easily by just selecting some of the vertices like this one right here it may be easier to do this one by one vertex select this one right here and we're going to to press double G to slide it along the edges which are around it. If you move it in different directions, it's going to follow the edge in that direction. And if you want to move it along another edge, you have to bring it back to the first position and then move it in the other direction. In this case, we're going to press double G and move it up in this direction so that it aligns with this other edge back here. And now together, these two edges form a relatively straight line. Now we're also going to have to do that down here. Although in this case, if we move one by one vertex, it's going to be very hard to place them so that they form a perfectly straight line. It's probably going to look a little bit jagged such as what you can see right here. So instead, we can select this entire edge loop down here. And an easy way to do that is to select this vertex in the back here, then control and right click on another vertex and everything between those two vertices is going to be selected now you can take this entire selection and with double g you can slide that up along this edge or you can also slide it down if you want to but in this case we want to move it in this direction and now these vertices are going to move together and we can move them into a position where this edge aligns with these two edges from before now before we continue this line by making a cut here let me show you something else just to clean up your topology a little bit most likely this is not going to be perfectly aligned and you're probably going to be able to see that it's a little bit jagged here's how you can make this perfectly aligned if these edges here are not very well aligned, we can just select the first vertex right here and also shift select this next vertex on the other end over here. We're going to press J and that's going to create a cut directly between those two vertices. Now we can take these two vertices that we have before and with double G we're going to slide them back into place until they get all the way to the end. Then we're going to click to confirm this action and now we're going to go to wireframe view and we're going to use C to get our brush select tool and you can scroll up and down to change the size of this tool and now you can click on these places where we have two vertices in the exact same place this is because we slid one all the way to the other and this is not good because we can't have infinitely thin edges or infinitely thin faces we need to get rid of the double vertices so select both of these areas both of these vertices which are in the same place have to be selected now press m merge by distance and now blender is going to find where vertices are very close together in this case they're exactly in the same place and it's going to turn those double vertices into just one vertex and now you clean this up and now you have a much straighter line here Sometimes joining vertices with J is not going to give you a perfectly straight line and you're going to have to use a different way to get a perfectly straight laser cut from one point to the other. Another way to do this is to press K. This gives you your knife tool which allows you to make cuts anywhere and create new geometry manually. Click on the first vertex right here. You're going to know that you're on a vertex because this little green square that you see otherwise is going to get a red frame around it. It's very small but if you pay attention you're going to see it. Click on the first vertex then click on the other vertex over here and now 
hit enter and this is just another way to make a straight cut which sometimes works better usually it's the same but sometimes it might work differently then again you do the same thing you select these vertices and you slide them in select the surrounding area press m merge by distance and now you got a nice clean cut here before we create the gap i also told you that i'm going to show you how to extend this edge here to the end so we continue to have a straight line here and this is going to cut straight through this part of the mesh over here around the wheel to do that we're going to press three on the number pad to go to side view you might have to press one to go to side view it depends on how your model is rotated in the scene and now i can see that we still have to adjust this vertex right here so we're just going to quickly slide that up just to make this look a little bit more straight and now we have to continue this cut in this direction we can't have it going down here but we also can't take these vertices and move them up here manually by pressing wg to slide them because that's going to change the shape of this hole down here and as you can see now these edges down here are not equally long it looks like this hole here is a little bit busted and that's not really good so instead we're going to keep this geometry here and we're going to use our knife tool to cut a line right here now you can press k click right here and try to make a new line but probably it's not going to be perfectly aligned with this edge back here so when we activate our knife tool with k we're going to click on this vertex back here and then we're going to draw a line and we're going to carefully align it with this edge over here and we're going to know that this is perfectly aligned when this square right here turns red so take a look at this vertex right here right now we got some green squares here and there but when we carefully try to bring this very close here at some point this square at that vertex is going to turn red that's when you want to click to confirm your cut now you can hit enter and now you have new geometry here but there is another problem that we have to take care of right now we made a cut here but we only cut the geometry which we could see from the side view perspective we did not get a cut back here so we're going to undo this with Control z and let me show you how to do this properly go back to side view k for knife tool click right here and now we're going to press c to cut through and now this is basically like a laser cutting through the entire mesh everything in the back which we can't see is also getting cut now you want to be careful when you're using this to make sure you don't cut any geometry in the background such as the inside of this lamp right here and to prevent that from happening we can just select this geometry back here press p separate the selection and now this is a separate object which is not going to be affected by the knife cut that we're doing on this mesh here later we can join these back together go to side view press k click right here follow this edge very carefully if you zoom in more before you make the knife cut you're going to be more precise press c to cut through and now align your knife cut with the edge below until you get this red vertex here again then click hit enter and now you also have a cut down here if you look very closely over here we only have one vertex everything is perfectly clean now we have a perfect line which we can follow when we want to create this gap here so let's go back to object mode select this then shift select this Control j to join them back into the same object and now these meshes here are still separated so we're going to select this geometry press m merge by distance and now they're going to be connected again now here's how you can turn this into a gap between the panels it's shockingly simple we're going to use alt right click to select all these edges which we have down here then with shift alt right click we're going to add this segment up here to the selection and now we have this entire edge loop selected and we're just going to make a separation between this side and this side up here to do that just press Control b normally Control b is used to create bevels but in this case we're just going to get a nice gap between these two sides of the mesh you might get more segments but you can reduce that by scrolling down all the way until you only have two edge loops like this you can also hold down shift while you're setting the size this is going to allow you to control the width of this gap more accurately i want my gap to be something like this so when i get the right width i'm going to click and now while this is selected we can just press x delete faces and now we have a gap here but we still have to make some edges on the inside here to make this look a bit more realistic in this case it's going to be very hard to do that if we have this many edges on the corners so we're going to select with alt right click all the edges which are close to the corners x dissolve edges do the same thing down here also on this corner up here in the back x dissolve edges and we also have some more on the inside here dissolve edges we can always add those back later now we're going to select the edge loops on both sides of this gap with alt right click and shift alt right click go to w bridge edge loops and now this is very simple press alt e extrude faces along normals and now you can just push these outwards or inwards like this we're going to push them inwards a little bit like this and you might get some 
some weird twisting here. To fix that, we're going to press X to delete the faces on the inside. And with double G, we can just slide some of these vertices on the inside back and forth a little bit, change their position. And to fix any weird twisting like this, you can also just move them with G and place them in a better position where this is going to look a little bit nicer. You have to be careful if you have sharp corners like this because things might get very messy around here. As you can see in this case right here, we have to take this vertex, lift it up a bit like this. This one over here, we also have to lift it up until it aligns with this surface down here. And before you know it, we got some edges on the inside. When we add a subdivision surface modifier, this is kind of going to bend inwards and it's going to look a lot more realistic. Now we can select these sharp edges again, which had some bevels around them before. That was this edge around here and also these edges down here. With control B, we're going to bevel those. Scroll up once to get three edge loops. And before you apply this, we're going to press P and pull the mouse away to make these completely sharp. And that's how we're going to get some perfect geometry around these gaps. If you want to make this even better, you can select these sharp edges around the gaps. And with control B, you can also bevel those. That's going to make these a little bit tighter when you have a subdivision surface modifier here. Here's what it looks like before beveling. And here's what it looks like after beveling. As you can see, it's quite a bit sharper. Try to find the end of this gap. Over here on the inside of the wheel, we have one example. And we're probably going to get something like this where we have some extra faces and vertices. Just select everything there with the B box select tool. X delete faces. And you're going to be able to clean that up instantly. We also have another example on the inside of this headlight. So again, select everything. X delete faces. And that's how you make gaps between panels on cars. If you learned something from this tutorial, then at least like the damn video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more tutorials like this. And let me know in the comments what you want to see in the next tutorial. And I'll see you in the next one.